What could our opponent possibly be doing? Oh, <laughs> is that a little maxi? Is that a maximum C in your hand by any chance? Oh no, how will I, a pendulum player, deal with a maxi? Oh, woe is be me! I am surely do! Anyways. Hey! <laughs> Couldn't take the maxi challenge! Still got a challenge out, I guess. <laughs> pendulum! Tired of having interaction in your Yu Gi Oh matches? Terrified of the thought that you want to play Drytron but don't want all your friends to make fun of you and leave you for playing Drytron? Exhausted at the silly back and forth of actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh and letting your opponent play Yu-Gi-Oh as well? Realizing I had to learn how to tie a tie to make this stupid intro bit? Well, do I have the deck for you! With Pendulums! Undestructible first turn boards, terrifying in Demion Engine going second. We're, we're not playing Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> but we are winning. And we're doing that with Zephra Magicians. Again, if you'd like to check out some gameplay, go ahead and it is going to be linked above. So you could go ahead and check out how the, the ins and outs of the deck and how it works. And you can see gameplay of it going second against Dry Brigade and absolutely dominating. So feel free to check that out. But if not, if you're here just for the deck profile, I'll get right into it now. Kicking into the deck list, we're going to explain the strangest choice first. We run the one copy of Ash Blossom. Now, this isn't here to hand trap your opponent. This is just here to stop Maxi. Maxi and Droll and Lockbird are the only hand traps that are significantly going to hit your deck. You're going to be able to breeze through anything else, even including Nibiru's very consistently. So we don't really care about them. We just really, really care about not getting Maxi'd as much as we can. Then we run three copies of Severin of Endymion. This card is absolutely insane at three. I hope that this card can come back to three in the TCG soon. But as for right now, it is sadly limited to one. But at here, we have a full absolute powerhouse potential. And it's the reason why we can play around things like hand traps so consistently. This lets us gives us really easy access to cards like Mythical Beast Jackal King, which is a negate and destroy effect. Or even in Demion if we just want an early spell negate. Then we run two copies of Performer Power Pendulum Sorcerer. This card is not the best card in the deck, but it is a low scale and it is really easily searchable by Performer Power Skull Crow bad joker so even though you won't see perform power sorcerer's effect go up very often when it does get to go off it is very strong you typically use it to search the skull crow bad joker but if not you're typically grabbing it off the skull crow bad joker instead we run one copy of zephra thubin this is again probably the weakest card in the deck but we just use it to synergize with zephrath this lets us rescale zephrath to a low scale which you need sometimes next up we run three copies of the like and subscribe button because why would you not run three of this in your deck it's an extremely intelligent move and they say it makes you 10 times more professional and attractive to do it go ahead and add three of them to your deck profile suggest 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 do it now please 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 we run three copies of magical abductor magical abductor is just basically budget servant of endymion she's a lot worse and in, though we could run six copies of servant of endymion it's better to have backup and run nine copies of her instead this card is a worse servant of endymion but it is still insanely powerful and allows you to grab cards that you might need and if you don't have servant to summon the jackal king sometimes you just use a Doctor to search the Jackal King and summon it that way. It's not as good, but it's still very powerful. Then we run one copy of Skull Crow Bat Joker. It was very exciting when this card came off the ban list to one. And then eventually they raised it even higher, unlimiting it to two and three. But turns out you don't actually need more than one copy of Skullcrow Bad Joker. One is more than enough because of how easily searchable this card is. Although this is the only real normal summon in the deck, it's just so easy to access that it's fine running it at one copy. Then we run two copies of Harmonizing Magician. This card is limited to two, but we never wanted to run more than two copies of it anyways. This is just two bodies for free that allows you to go into Xyz and Synchro Pelés. An extremely powerful card that almost always ends up on a Borderload Savage. Dragon. Then we run one copy of Purple Poison Magician. This is typically what you're summoning off of the Harmonizing Magician. But this card is intensely powerful. It is easily searchable and allows you to out cards that you shouldn't have any business dealing with. Since when this card is destroyed as a pendulum spell or a monster, it lets you pop a card. I've used this card to out big tricky boss monsters a lot or even out floodgates like skill drain and imperial order and anti-spell fragrance. This card is absolutely insane and being searchable makes it even that much stronger. Then we're in two copies of Celestial Magician. This is just a free search at the end of the turn and synergizes again with a whole magician package. Um, it's a powerful 
summon that will increase its own attack to beat over sticky monsters and get you any card you need for follow up on the next turn when you activate its effect. Then we run two copies of Zephra Nui. This is a soft brick in the deck. Typically you want to send it off Zephrath, but sometimes even if you hard draw it, just be using its effect to search a spell is so powerful that it really doesn't matter. This gives you access to the whole Zephra package, which just lets us play a bunch of spells during our turn and set up some very powerful negates. Then we run one copy of Jackal King. Again, typically you want to search summon it off the Servant of Endymion, but again, just hard summoning it is just as good. A monster negate that also destroys and hits cards in hand and graveyard is insanely powerful, lets you play through hand traps and is just one of the best cards in the deck, but again, so easily searchable that one copy is enough. Two copies of Endymion the Mighty Master. Mighty Master is the cover monster of the whole Endymion archetype and it shows with how powerful he is. Infamous for having some of the longest card text in the game, it is just a really powerful card being all, both a high skill and summoning itself for six skill counters to pop an insane amount of monsters on the board. It will pop as many cards not just monsters as spell counters that as things that can hold spell counters as there are on the field so you commonly find this card being able to pop between three and five cards on your opponent's side of the field and again once it's on board it's a free spell negate that can bounce itself to get allow itself to get, be summoned and pop things again which is absolutely bonkers then we run two copies of zephrath we actually run about eight copies of zephrath because of how easily searchable this card is with other cards but this card allows you to manipulate its scale number and send car months pendulum monsters to the extra deck zone so it gives you an extra free summon and just lets you modify its scale number a really powerful card uh one copy of terraforming this just allows us to search the or Oracle of Zephra and is a free spell to play since we care about spell counters a lot, which again just lets us access Zephrath. Two copies of Pendulum Call. This lets you search Harmonizing, Purple Poison, or Celestial Magician. Just be wary with this card because once you activate it, you will no longer be able to destroy Magician monsters in the Pendulum Zone and your opponent will be, to be able to either until a full turn yours and your opponent has passed. So don't mess yourself up with the Electromite. Three copies of Zephra Providence. This just searches any Zephra card in the deck, which is absolutely insane and lets us get more spells into the graveyard. Then two copies of Duelist Alliance. Um, I actually run this at a weird ratio. It's probably better to run three copies of Duelist Alliance and two copies of Pendulum Call. I just run this at two at a habit to play around Droll and Lockbird, but again, nobody's really playing it, but if you want to be extra safe, you could run this same ratio. Three copies of Spell Power Mastery. Now, Spell Power Mastery is insanely strong. It's another way to access Servant of Endymion, or if you're already set up and you don't need to access Servant of Endymion, it's two spell counters for one spell and even lets you access Endymion very easily if you want to pick up out boards and you're already established. Two copies of Oracle of Zephra. Again, this just lets us search any Zephra card in the deck, and cards that let you search anything in, within its archetype are really strong. Two copies of Called by the Grave, just so we don't get max seed. Sometimes it's better to let yourself the Ash Blossoms resolve and get your play a little bit disrupted, because again, if you just stop the max seed, you win anyways, and it's really easy to play around hand traps with this deck. Then we run one copy of Zep Zephra's Divine Strike. It's really easily ser searchable with either Zephra Nui or the Zephra Providence, and it is a counter trap, so it's just insanely powerful as a counter trap that is searchable and easy to access so we'll save this for the big bads of the deck and easily disrupt your opponent's turn now moving on to the extra deck we run one copy of Borlo Savage Dragon this is just an insanely powerful card that's always been run in decks that run link monsters and it's a summonable just off of harmonizing basically alone which is really really powerful then we run one copy of Abyss Dweller this deck runs pumps out level fours so easily that we just run a bunch of generic level fours and Abyss Dweller is a very strong one against a lot of the meta matchups one copy of Silent Honor arc. This is just a cheaper version of Nightmare Cerberus that, again, doesn't require discard fodder, so it's very good with all our level 4s. One copy of Time Star Magician. This is typically what we use to search out Performa Pal Skull Crowbat Joker using Harmonizing whatever she summons because it'll put the Harmonizing in the graveyard once you detach her, since if a monster is used by Exe material, it'll go to the graveyard instead. Then you could just re special summon it off of Selene and still make your Borderload Savage after searching the Skull Crowbat. Then we run one copy of Tor. Tornado Dragon. Tornado Dragon is just a cheaper Nightmare Phoenix. Then we run number 41 Baguska. This card very rarely comes up, but again, if your opponent somehow hand traps you about three or four times and just has like every single answer, it's still incredibly easy to end on a Baguska and your opponent's going to be very down in the amount of cards that they have in hand. So this will just stall for a turn and let you do the whole Pendulum Chicken and again, again next turn. Uh, one copy of Zeus. If there's one card that you are completely free to cut from this deck, it definitely is Zeus. Zeus very rarely comes up in Pendulums because you don't typically want to hit your own board because you have scales to worry about. But Zeus is just so insanely powerful and we run so many Xyz that it is a card that I basically run in any deck that can do it. I've only ever wanted to summon Zeus 
once in any game I've ever played with his deck. And the game that I did summon Zeus with it, it absolutely single-handedly won me the game. So again, not at all necessary, but just a really powerful card. One copy of Artemis. This is just a uh, free fodder when you're link climbing to access code. So you could banish it because typically we want to use the Selene instead to make the Borloid Savage, which means we won't have a light in the graveyard. One copy of Electromite. This card is absolutely insane. Makes this card so good. I really hope this card comes back to the TCG at one very soon. But basically, this card just lets us fix our scale, send monsters to the extra deck to summon more, has good pointing arrows, and allows us to pop our Zephrath once we've used it and are done with it to draw a card. It fixes our scales and gains us card advantage. Uh, one copy of Nightmare Phoenix if you're really desperate and you need to out floodgates like Imperial Order. Then we run one copy of Oswa. We just run a lot of Earths and it helps us link climb. Sometimes it doesn't come up very often. Feel free to change this. One copy of Nightmare Unicorn, again, for when you're really desperate or just a good generic link three to climb into access code talker so its attack grows to 5300 oh one copy of selene selene's insane she's just a quick play monster reborn in this deck because you're basically running almost all spellcasters and allows you to climb into access code talker while setting up very strong plays and procking the effects of cards like perform a pal pendulum sorcerer or just getting out jackal king or mighty master again and again she just gains a ton of spell spell counters on herself which makes it really easy to summon cards like mighty master because you could just eat spell counters off of her uh one copy of apollosa this is typically on gonna be on your end board every single first turn along with three or four other negates so it's just a really free way to get even more negates on field an insanely powerful card and access code as the inverse of our apollosa for when you want to end games instead of secure them for a longer game really easy to make it with pendulums anyways that's a basic deck breakdown this deck is again really really powerful and a whole lot of fun so if you really want a very powerful deck that your opponents aren't going to know how to play against it and you're going to get an advantage off of that along with how strong and combo heavy and fun it is just to play pendulums then go ahead and give this a try again this isn't the best pendulum list you could probably be playing in master duel but it is a really really fun one and a really strong one if you're a fan of the zephyr archetype now the thing about this deck list that's really cool is that this whole main deck is when I built it was around $20 in real life and I believe it still would cost like $30 to make the main deck in real life. The extra deck is a different issue. But if you guys are interested in seeing a budget pendulum profile since this channel was initially about creating pricing guides for how much decks cost and stuff like that just let me know and I'll create a full pricing guide and a full physical deck profile for this list and how you can build it if you're a fan of that. Um, if you want to see gameplay again I'll just remind you that click the little time thing on top and it'll take you right to it. I'm trying to separate them right now from the main video see how that does for the algorithm but if you guys don't like it let me know and I'll change it back to mushing together the deck list and the gameplay together so again it's all about what you guys want so just let me know and let your voice be heard anyways thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this deck profile for Zephra Magicians anyways this has been Rojas and it's been a blast doing this deck profile signing out mm -hmm.